chapter 13 this time. 1 Kings 13. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of background before we stand for the reading of the Word of God, because we'll pick up the reading just to give you a little bit of understanding about what's taking place. So Solomon has died and and Rehoboam has uh, ascended to the throne. And when Rehoboam first took over the throne, Israel was all one. There was no division. But what happened was, was um, Rehoboam uh, sought counsel from the older men as far as to ask them what he should do as a king to the people of Israel. And the older men said to him, if you're, if you're kind to them, if you speak comfortably to them, if you're a blessing to them, uh, words like that, he's, uh, the old men said, they'll, they'll serve you forever. They'll be your servants forever. Well, uh, he listened to them and let them go. And what Rehoboam did is he asked the younger men, his peers, to come to him. And he asked his peers what he should do. And what his peers, the young men, said to Rehoboam, no, 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 no. He said, your dad, uh, your dad uh, beat them with whips and you're going to be like a scorpion. You need to be hard on them and all this sort of stuff. And, and uh, basically their counsel was the exact opposite to the counsel of the older men. And so Rehoboam listened to the younger men and wanted to be a a hard taskmaster over Israel. Well, what happened was, is all the tribes to the north all kicked up and said, we've got nothing to do with Bethlehem and Judah and all that. We're we're going. And so that's where the that's where the division came. And what happened was, was Jeroboam, who was the servant of Solomon, was in Egypt they called Jeroboam back. Now, God had already prophesied this. The, the Lord already prophesied what was going to take place. So the tribes to the north asked Jeroboam to come back and be their king over the tribes to the north, while Jeroboam remained king over the tribes to the south. Right. So that's, that's the division. Now, what Jeroboam did is Jeroboam was, was very, uh, I guess, a little bit insecure. He, he thought in his heart, he said, now... Uh, if the people up here go down to Jerusalem to worship, he was worried that Rehoboam would get a hold of them and change their mind and come back and be under Rehoboam. So what Jeroboam did is in Bethel and Dan, so Dan is to the north of the northern tribes and Bethel is to the south, he set up two places of worship. Right? He said he made two golden calves. He set up two new altars, he put in a new priesthood, and he changed the date of when people were to go and worship. So Jeroboam said, these are now your gods, these these are the places that you go and worship now, so you don't have to travel down to Jerusalem. Well, what happened was, was God sent a man of God from Judah to Bethel. And when the man of God, the young man of God got there, he, he prophesied against the altar and he said, oh, altar, altar. Uh, a young man by the name of Josiah is going to be raised up and he's going to destroy the altar and he's going to burn the, the bones of the priests and all of this. And so Jeroboam stretched forth his hand and said, take hold of that man. And as he did that, Jeroboam's hand withered up and he cried out. And he said, oh, pray for me, man of God, pray for me. So the man of God prayed for him and his hand became normal again. And so Jeroboam says to the young man of God, he said, oh, Come into my house and and have a feed. Gracie, Gracie, it's preaching time. Sit down. Come inside and have a feed and and, and have a drink and all those sorts of things. And the young prophet said, no, 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 I can't do that. I've got to go back another way. Uh, I I can't go to this this side or that side. I've got to come in, uh, come in another way and go back home. Right. So that's what Jeroboam wanted the young prophet to do. The young prophet said, no. So I want you to take your Bibles, turn to 1 Kings 13. Let's stand together. Look at verse number 11. We're going to pick up in verse number 11. 1 Kings 13, verse number 11. It says, Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his son, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon. And he went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me, and eat bread. 
And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank water. And it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but camest back and hast eaten bread and drunk water in the place of the, of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water, thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. It came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him the ass to wit, for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him, and his carcass was cast into the way, and the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. Behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way, and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, it is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord hath delivered him unto the lion, which hath torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord, which he spake unto him. And he said unto his son, saying, Saddle me the ass. And they saddled him. And he went and found his carcass cast in the way and the ass and the lion standing by the carcass. The lion had not eaten the carcass nor torn the ass. And the prophet took up the carcass of the man of God and laid it upon the ass and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him. I don't know about you, but this passage of scripture perplexes me. It really perplexes me when I, when I read about the older prophet and the younger prophet. But the old prophet in verse 29 took up the carcass of the man of God. And I want to just briefly share tonight this thought. The autopsy on the carcass of a foolish prophet. The autopsy of, on the carcass of a foolish prophet. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. Lord, as we look at this passage of scripture, we do pray that you would open the eyes of our understanding. I pray that you would teach us from your word tonight. I pray that you would help us to understand the importance of, of being obedient to you. And Lord, the very fact that we all have the Holy Spirit living inside us and all have the opportunity to hear from you and to obey you. So I pray, Father, as we look at this passage, that you would help us now in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. It's interesting that the meaning for the word autopsy is this, a personal observation or an ocular view. And it's from the Greek word meaning self and sight or seeing for yourself. All right, seeing for yourself. Now, when a, a, a coroner is called to a deceased body and they don't know how that person uh, died, he will take that body back to the morgue and he will perform an autopsy. So he wants to see for himself. He wants to understand what caused the death of this person. We want to look at that tonight. Now, we know basically what caused the death of the young prophet was the disobedience he showed towards God in what God had told him what not to do. But the events surrounding that we want to have a look at. Because, it, as I said before, it perplexes me that here's this young prophet and an old prophet... And now it, it, it's all right to think the young prophet could say to Jeroboam, no, I can't turn aside. I can't go and eat with you. I can't go and drink with you. Uh, I can't do that because God has told me not to do that. It's, it would be easy, I would say, for the young prophet to say no to a wicked king. But to come to another man who says, I'm a prophet just like you. And God spoke to me and he said, you now come into my house. And he did that. He obeyed the older prophet and God killed him. I struggle with that. 
I had a hard time when I was reading through that through the week and it's like, wow. Why would God kill the young prophet for listening to an older man of God? Well, it's very important to understand the first thing is this, is that you and you alone are responsible for what you hear from the Lord. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to, I've got four things I want to give you very quick. I want to get through the first three because I want to really just labor on the last one a little bit to help us understand. But you and you alone are responsible for what you hear from the Lord. You don't understand something. The, the, the pastor or the, 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 the man of God is not your priest. I'm not your priest. Uh, you have the right to hear from the Lord yourself. Amen. Right? You have that right. You, because of the new covenant now, you, we all have the Holy Spirit who's born, and we'll get to that in a minute, who was born again. We all have the Holy Spirit. We all have the, the, the right to hear from God ourselves. I am, I am not your priest. I don't have a, uh, a, a monopoly on the voice of God and hearing from God and saying, John, God has told me about your business. You know what I mean? John has a right to hear from the Lord himself concerning his life. Now, that's not to say that you can't go and seek counsel and things like that or say, can you pray with me about that? At the end of the day, John or yourself has the, the responsibility to obey what God has specifically spoken to you about. When I think about this old prophet, where was the old prophet? He was living in Bethel. That was the place where Jeroboam set up false worship. I'm wondering why didn't God use the old prophet in Bethel to raise him up and speak against what was happening? We could just maybe think about that for a little bit. The Bible doesn't actually say. So this is just an observation, right? This is just an opinion. What I have noticed over, over the, the term of my ministry, I guess, I've worked with a, with a number of older preachers. And the older the pastor becomes, the more comfortable he becomes. And the less he wants to get involved with confrontation and conflict. And, and, and listen, nobody likes to deal with confrontation. If you're someone who likes confrontation, you need your head red. Nobody likes. But you know what? There are times in the ministry where the preacher has to confront and deal with things. Right? But I've noticed that the older the preacher gets, the less he wants to confront that. So it could be that he was basically just cruising in Bethel. He you know, wasn't doing anything much. And so God raised up a, a younger man and brought him from Judah into Bethel. Now, again, the scriptures don't say so it's just a That's just an opinion. So you can take it for what it is. But... God spoke, now isn't it interesting, God spoke to both of these men. He told the young prophet what to go and do. And then while that young prophet was in the house of the old prophet, God spoke through the old prophet and prophesied the end of his life. Right? But the young prophet was responsible. He alone was responsible for what God had told him. Secondly, you may have to resist the persuasiveness of well-meaning people. You may have to resist the persuasiveness of well-meaning people. You, would you agree that the older prophet was pretty persuasive? The Bible says he lied to him, but he was pretty persuasive, wasn't he? I feel so much for the younger prophet because if I was the young man and an older prophet came to me and said, God spoke to me, I would say, oh, it must be legit. It must be legit. I'll, I'll do what God has told you to do. The only difference that I can see, look at verse 17 and 18 again. It said, the young prophet said this in verse 17, for it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He, the old prophet, said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. Now look at this. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord. Do you see the difference there? The young prophet said, the word of the Lord came to me. The old prophet said, an angel spoke unto me by the word of the Lord. Now we understand in the Old Testament, there was a lot of angelic ministry, right? 
That's the only difference that I can see here when it comes to the, 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 what, what the old prophet received compared to what the young prophet received. All right? That's the only difference I can see. The very fact that the angel spake unto him by the word of the Lord. So, so here's this old prophet and now what he's doing. And by the way, the young prophet should not have allowed the older prophet to change or persuade him to change his direction. Now, this message should be preached to a congregation filled with preachers. But we're gonna, we'll, we'll get something out of it ourselves as well. Because this is what also I see, and maybe you've seen it, Brother John, over the years, is that we, we promote and lift up certain preachers, right? And we hold them up here, and we're to go to these men and get there, you know, well, you know, should do this. I have heard it. I have heard it. I was in a meeting once where we were told that we ought to put a certain preacher up on a pedestal and make him a hero. That's pretty dangerous. That's pretty dangerous. Why is it dangerous? Because what we're doing is nothing less or nothing short of Roman Catholicism. To say that this man has more of a, of a monopoly on hearing from the Lord to tell what other preachers need to do or whatever is pretty bad. Every preacher, with whatever size of his church, every Christian gets to hear from God himself in regards to what his life and direction in life should be. As I said, I, I'm not the priest. I, I'm, I'm a preacher, yes, and, 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 and God gives me a message. You have to, it's up to you what you do with that. You have every right to hear from God and get direction. Who am I to come along and say, well, listen, uh, anyway, I've been picking on you enough today. Uh, oh, look, you know that job that you've done for down in Canberra, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I heard from the Lord the other day, and I don't think. God said that uh, you shouldn't do that. Well, if he heard from the Lord and the Lord said to him, you ought to go, I, there's a bit of confusion happening here now, isn't there? And who's the author of confusion? Not God. But he's responsible because he heard from the Lord. I'm just a man. All right? I'm just a vessel who can get things wrong. Every preacher can get things wrong. Right? So you've got to be so careful. So as I said before, you and you alone are responsible, but you may have to resist the persuasiveness of well-meaning people. Yeah. I was sharing with uh, Brother John before everyone got here tonight. Uh, there, there was a time where a, a, a young Christian man who's married and had a young family, he wanted to go and work in the mines because he wanted to get money and save up and pay off his house and all of that. Well, that's all good things to do. But I said to him, I said, okay, you want to go to the mines? Is there any Christian fellowship there? Is there any church there? And all that. He said, no, no, there's no church. There's no Christian fellowship. And I said, do you really think the Lord would lead you to a place where there's no fellowship, no church, nothing like that? You'd better be careful. You'd better be careful. Now, I didn't say you shouldn't go. But there's a question mark if God would lead someone to go somewhere with... I remember Jerome. Remember Jerome? Remember Jerome when he was here? He said to me one time, God told me that I'm to go to the middle of Australia and that's where I'm to be and that's where I should be in the desert. That's where I need to hear from the Lord. All this sort of stuff. And I said, you sure about that? Are you sure about that? That you heard from the Lord with that? So there's, that's not to say that you can't like, get counsel or anything like that, but you've got to be very careful because you've got to resist the persuasiveness of, of well-meaning people. Uh, you know, when, when, we, when we left Adelaide to come to Brisbane and then when we left Brisbane to come to the coast, each time the Lord had spoken to me and, and said, this is what you're to do. And then I got confirmation through the word as well. So we're not talking about anything void of the word of God. But when I left the coast to go to Perth, there were people that were so perplexed about that. Why are you leaving Sunshine Baptist Church? What? All this sort of stuff. And men were crying and, and all this sort of, oh, you know, uh, you should have let us know. We need to pray with you about that and all this sort of stuff. And it's like, well, if I've heard from the Lord, 
Why do I have to get someone to pray as if I hadn't heard from the Lord? You know what I mean? I am responsible to act upon what God has told me to do, just like you're responsible to act upon what God has told you to do. All right. So that's the second. Number three. Number three. Oh, by the way, have a listen, have a listen to this verse in 1 Corinthians 16, 12. Uh, Paul said this, as touching our brother Apollos, I greatly desired him to come unto you with the brethren. But his will was not at all to come at this time, but he will come when he shall have convenient time. You know what I like about that? What I like about that is you've got Paul, who is the elder statesman. He's the older preacher. And you've got Apollos, who was younger and a little bit, you know, he wasn't so far advanced as what Paul was. But Paul still respected the fact that Apollos said, no, I don't want to come at this time. I'm going to come when it's more convenient. Paul didn't demand him. The older preacher didn't say, well, bless God, you need to listen to me. You need to get here right now and all this sort of stuff. Paul respected the fact that Apollos could hear from God himself. I like that. And I think that's important. All right. But number three, let me give you this. The consequences of disobedience can be catastrophic. The consequences of disobedience can be catastrophic. We see that in the text that we just read, that God said, because you disobey, you're gone, you're dead, you're finished. And then the lion got in. Isn't that amazing? The lion didn't tear him up. The body's there, the lion's sitting there, and so is the axe. And people are walking by, looking at this, like, what in the world? It's like, man, oh, whoa, there's a lion there. But no, the lion's just there, the ass is there, and the body's just there for everybody to see. And then that stinking older prophet's like, oh, yeah, that's that young prophet who disobeyed the Lord. You made him disobey the Lord. You know what I mean? I just sometimes want to reach down into the pages of my Bible and grab a hold of this guy and shake him and say, you're the one that made him disobey God. But anyway, you know, the consequences of disobeying God are catastrophic. That's why it's very important that you make sure you hear from the Lord. Now, let me give you the last thought. We're going to look at some scripture here and then, then we'll be done. We all have the Holy Spirit to hear from. We all have the Holy Spirit to hear from. Now, I want you to go to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. Folks, let me tell you, I'm not Moses. I'm not Moses that goes up to the mountain and receives word from God to come back and say, Thus saith the Lord. Just, you, know what, you know what I mean? Uh, I, <laughs> you, we all have the Holy Spirit to hear from God. You have the Holy Spirit to lead you in what to do. Brother Jeff, they've got the Holy Spirit. You, young God, you've got the Holy Spirit living inside you. That's why you, we, we all need to be praying and seeking direction from the Holy Spirit himself because that's the benefit and the blessing of being a New Testament believer. We can hear from him ourselves. Look at verse number 13. Jesus said this, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. Now look at this. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Did you see what Jesus is saying? When you got saved, the Holy Spirit came and indwelt your life. The, the spirit of truth lives inside of you and he can guide you into all truth. I need to be guided into all truth. I need to be guided into the truth of the Bible. I need to be guided in the truth of everyday life. And the Holy Spirit is the one that does that. But look at this. He's not going to speak of himself. He's not going to big note himself. He's not going to promote himself. But whatsoever he shall hear. Well, who's he going to hear from? God. So here is the spirit of God hearing from. And whatsoever he hears, he is going to speak what he hears. Speak to who? Speak to you and speak to me. It is very important that we have confidence in knowing that we've heard from the Lord. I think most Christians struggle with hearing from the Lord, being confident. Let's, who here struggles about being confident about hearing from the Lord? Probably a lot of yep, shake your hand, yep, yep. I know it's only a small group and we don't want to put our hands up and, and all that sort of But most of us really struggle with confidence. 
I'm not sure if I hear from the Lord and all this. Listen, you, you've got to develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit of God because he is going to take what he hears from God the Father, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he is going to speak it to you. All right? He's going to speak. So he has a voice. He has a voice. And it's imperative that we hear from him. And the Bible says he will show you things to come. I don't believe, myself personally, you may differ, I don't believe Jesus is just talking to the apostles here and saying, well, guys, you're going to be able to uh, be told of things that's going to take place. I believe the Holy Spirit can also tell us about things that are going to come to pass. He can speak to us. Yes, it's in the book, but listen, you know, when you read the Bible and you can see, can't we, what's going on in the world lines up with the Scriptures. There's no doubt about that. So the Spirit of God illuminates your mind and says, do you see what's happening here is happening out here? And he's showing us things to come. What is the benefit about that? Well, one of the benefits about telling us about things to come is to stop us from uh, falling into temptation, falling into problems and falling into issues. He can guide us into all truth and say, no, 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 don't go that way. Go this way. Go this way. Just like God said to us, leave Adelaide and come here and leave here and go there and do all this sort of stuff. You've got to be confident in hearing from the Lord. You've got to be confident in that. Have a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. Folks. The young prophet was responsible before God. If I, if, let me just say, if I steered you in a wrong direction and it cost you big time, but you went against your better judgment as far as what God has told you and you obeyed, do you know who's going to be accountable when you stand before Jesus? You will be. <laughs> you will be. Not, you know. <laughs> It's true. You will be accountable. The Lord, it'd be like the Lord saying, well, hang on, I spoke to you specifically. Oh, but Lord, the pastor, the preacher, he, he told me to do this. Yeah, he might say, but I didn't. I didn't. See, I tell you, it's, it's time, folks, that we, that we had... And cultivated this relationship with the Spirit of God to make sure that we're hearing from him because you're going to be responsible on the day of judgment before the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at this in 1 Corinthians 2, look at verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. How does God reveal to you about the things of himself and about other things? Through his spirit. Through his spirit. Where is the Holy Spirit? Lives inside of you. Do you know what I don't want you to be? I don't want you to be so uh, reliant upon the preacher. There, I remember, Brother John, back in the 80s, there were, there were people in independent Baptist churches that wouldn't even go out and buy carpet or curtains unless they first asked the preacher. Really? How ridiculous is that? How ridiculous is that? But let me tell you, let me be honest, I think a lot of preachers like that because they feel needed and wanted and, and, and oh, they, you know, they come to me as if there's some sort of king or whatever it is and people are so reliant upon the preacher that they dare not do anything without asking the preacher first. Can't buy a car, I need to ask the preacher first. Why? Don't ask me, I don't know. <laughs> What, uh, Pastor, Pastor Stevenson, uh, what colour carpet should I get? Don't ask me, I'm colour blind. <laughs> Useless asking me. And anyway, it's like, ask God yourself. Ask the Lord. You, listen, preachers ought to be 
encouraging their people to mature in the things of God, to hear from God, to be able to live the Christian life themselves. Amen. Instead Amen. of being so reliant upon some man that's up the front. Amen. Anyway, let's have a look at this. Job, last verse of scripture. Go to the book of Job. Job chapter 32. This sounds, this sounds so not like independent Baptist, eh? It, it really concerns me. It actually annoys me to think that God's people can't move without asking the man of God. You know? Now, I'm not trying to minimise. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not trying to minimise the position that God's given me. I'm not trying to minimise that at all. It's important. There's no doubt about it. But like I've said all through this message, I'm not the high priest. I'm not the Pope. You know what I mean? I don't want you reliant on me. You know what I mean? You have as much access into the throne room of grace as what I got. You can, you can get God's ear as much as what I can get God's ear. Now, does that mean that the pastor can't pray for you? And all? No, 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 we're not saying that. But uh, it's, it's, it's unhealthy to get Christian people so reliant upon the man of God that they can't do anything without asking him. It's crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Look at uh, look at Job thirty two. Elihu, remember Job's three friends that <laughs> gave him such wonderful news. Elihu, the young man, speaks up. Look at verse number four. Now Elihu had waited till Job had spoken because they were elder than he. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. And Elihu said to Barakel the Buzite, answered and said, "I am young, and ye are very old." <laughs> That's not politically correct, is it? Wherefore, I was afraid and durst not show you mine opinion. I said, days should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Great men are not always wise. Neither do the aged understand judgment. I like what that young man said. He said there's a spirit in man and the inspiration, and that's the same word that 2 Timothy 3, 15, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. There is a spirit in man and the inspiration, the breath, the spirit of God giveth them understanding. Why? Great men are not always wise. Great men are not always wise. I could rattle off some of the great men of our movement. Wonderful men of God. But they're not always wise. So the responsibility is upon the individual who has a spirit. And the Holy Spirit leads them and guides them and gives them understanding and speaks to them. Why? Well, because preachers are not always wise. Great men are not always wise. So it's important to understand that this young prophet, the autopsy now, all right, on the carcass, the young prophet's laying before us, he's dead. Why is he dead? Well, he disobeyed God. What got him to the point of disobeying God? Well, he listened to someone that he shouldn't have listened to. He shouldn't have allowed his direction that God had given him to be changed. He should have been confident in that what he heard from God, God would have said to him directly if he wanted to change his direction. So we need to learn from that. We need to learn from that. We all have the Holy Spirit living within us. We're all subject to him and listening to him and getting direction from him and not from a man. Is everyone okay with that? Yeah. Again, not trying to minimise the importance of preaching and teaching and counsel and all that. All of that is right. All of that is proper. But I'm not your God. Amen. I'm not the Pope. I'm not the High Priest. Just another Christian that has a different position. All right. And it's important that preachers get God's people to the point of maturity where they're hearing from God themselves. And guess what? You may hear from God about something that... That I might not even understand, but that's okay. God spoke to you about it. God spoke to you about it. Amen? Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. Lord, help us all, uh, Father, to understand and be confident in hearing from the Lord. 
And so, God, we pray as we head into this week that you would lead us and guide us. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.